Just a little bit of a round over here. I'll just round that over. Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Um, you know, I'm a hobbyist wood turner, so I do whatever looks like it'd be fun to turn, and sometimes one-off projects are kind of interesting. I, I got an email from a gentleman from the UK that uh, said he had a, an heirloom chess set from, from his dad that uh, was missing a pawn, and he was wondering if I could turn him one. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm surprised you couldn't find somebody in Great Britain. Uh, uh, and I'd think twice about it, because, you know, just because the, the, the hassle of having to mail the thing, you know, and 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 and, and getting a, a detailed picture, or uh, it turns out he sent me a pic, gave me a picture, but he sent me a copy of the pawn after I agreed to do the, do the job. And you know, you can't charge enough money <laughs> for your time for something like this, because how much would somebody pay? But but you know, I thought it'd be fun, making an interesting little video to show you one off. I don't know how many times people say, "Oh, I I couldn't turn two of anything. Uh, it's just too hard." Well, it's not that hard, uh, you know, especially when you got something. You got the exact dimensions. You can measure it, and I want to show you some techniques for for one piece like this. I would handle it differently from turning a full chess set, and that goes from the way I would uh, prepare the wood, the way I would I would chuck the wood, and the way I would uh, whether or not I would develop a storyboard, or whether I would just use use calipers to mark the piece off. So I'm going to show you. Now, when I saw the saw this piece, I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, I'm not sure what this is. It, it might be boxwood, but I thought, you know, pear, uh, the Bradford pear I have around here is very tight grained. I've turned turned a couple of chess sets out of it, and, you know, I like, like pear. But it also uh, can be a very orange color. When you cut it, this is a piece cut on a bandsaw, not exactly milled, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's kind of a creamy, creamy white uh, with a tint of orange in it. The thing about Bradford pear, though, is it can oxidize. There's a piece that had been exposed to air for a while. Here's a little tiny ring bowl, uh, and you can see how how it changes very dark orange as it oxidizes, and, and all wood will tend to turn dark and over a period of, I don't know, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, it's going to be a dark lump of wood almost no matter what kind of wood, what kind of finish you, you've got on it. So they say... The form is the most important part because the grain you're not going to be able to see after a while when it turns turns dark. So uh, form is in, important. But I but I felt like this was going to be a very close match without having to try to do any kind of unusual uh, dyeing or finishing, which would be a, a real challenge to get it to match. But this ought to be fairly close. I did not plan to show you all aspects of turning a chess set because I've got a whole a playlist of of videos on two chess sets I turned, and I'll have linked that playlist both in the show notes and at the end of this this video. In turning a full chess set, there are some things I do differently than I would in turning a one-off piece like this, and one of them is the uh, preparation of the blank. I would cut it to the exact length if I was doing a whole uh, chess set, but for something like this, I'll, I'll do it a little little simpler and just grab a grab a blank to to cut. Besides cutting the blank to length, the other difference is I would have a little storyboard uh, that I would use that have exact dimensions. And for the blank, I'd also drill it for a uh, screw mandrel like this and, and chuck it up where it's fastened on, on one end. But for this individual piece, I would simply chuck up a piece of wood and put it on the chuck and, and, and turn it for, for this piece that I'm going to duplicate. For this video, I've gone ahead and uh, turned this between centers, turned it round, put a small tenon on it, fit my small jaws, and and uh, shortened the end of it. And now I'm beginning to take it down. I've already cut a little recess at the bottom, showing the bottom of the, the piece. Uh, I would normally use a storyboard, but since I've got the actual piece to measure, I'll just take those measurements and mark them as I as I get to them. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm using a piece of uh, Bradford pear, which is very, very tight green wood, and I've started on the uh, spherical uh, uh, head of this uh, pawn, and I'm starting with a V groove to kind of differentiate the, uh, the length, set the length. Uh, now I'm going to turn around and, and take it down just a little bit. After I go a little bit deeper, it's still a little bit thick, so I'll take a peeling cut to bring the, the, the head down just to about where it needs to be. 
And now I'll use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge to start that shaping process for that, uh, that sphere. Pardon my dog in the background. This is a little smaller than the pieces I have in my other chest set. I'm going to bring the other set up, just kind of eyeball it, see if it's, uh, if it's hat, hat shaping up. Uh, now I'm shut it, uh, shaping the, the collar. This piece uh, is about three quarters inch at the base, which is a little bit smaller than the, the sets that, uh, that I featured earlier. Now I'm using this 1 8 inch parting tool to just mark a bottom feature. That's easier than using a set of calipers. I just found a tool that would fit. And now I'm cutting a little V groove uh, for that bottom, bottom feature. Checking it again, see if it looks looks good, and it does. So now I'll just continue to mark the the next feature because this particular pawn has a little different, uh, an additional uh, feature shape in the middle. So I'm going to start taking it down underneath the collar. And I'm going to come along with a parting tool to we find that part underneath the collar. And here's where I'm taking that 1 8 inch parting tool and bringing it down to about a quarter of an inch. And, and then the, a little lower to the base, it's just a little bit wider and I'll kind of join those with the, the parting tool. And then I'll come back to the bottom and start refining that, that shape into that area, leaving just a, a slight uh, relief at the bottom part, differentiating the base from, from part of the body. And that's looking good. Pretty reasonable proximity. Now I'm going to take. A, I'm going to go through the grits and sandpaper. I'm only going to go. I'm going to go up to about. Start with 120 and go up to about 400. I'll, uh, I'm not going to waste your time with the, all that sanding. But once I do the sanding with those grits, I'm going to come back with some abrasive paste and uh, put a nice generous coat on it and refine it. And that gets rid of the very very small uh, scratches and it also begins to fill in some of the. Uh, pores in the wood with a little bit of a, a wax to make an even uh, finer uh, surface. And I'm going to use a traditional finish, so I'm taking a piece of carnauba wax and just applying that to the, to the wood and just putting on a, a, a try to get a nice even layer of wax, but not too heavy a buildup. Then I'm going to come back with a uh, piece of paper towel. And, and friction it in at, at much higher speed to get a nice uniform. Carnauba wax is the hardest known wax to man. It's made from the carnauba palm plant. Very, very hard wax. And I'll just keep moving it around and until, like I say, it just literally melts, melts into the wood and gives it a nice natural finish. It's easy to buff up. Uh, not as shiny as shellac uh, or, or as lacquer. Now I'm going to part this this tool off, uh, this, this, this piece. Again, I'm going to use a thin parting tool, a sixteenth of an inch, and just come right underneath there, kind of indent it just a little bit. It'll leave a tiny little nib that I'll easily be able to sand off onto on a flat uh, board with a piece of sandpaper on it. So, yeah, I'm happy with this. It's looking good. Uh, the color, it'll oxidize, and, and the colors will closely match before long. If you're interested in more detailed videos, like I say, I've got a, a video playlist that I, I've got a link to here that's got uh, 10 different videos on turning two different chess sets. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.